I'm about to take you on a tour of what's currently on offer for young girls and you'll see how the proliferation and globalization of sexual imagery is overlapping with childhood, shaping an environment in which young girls and boys are increasingly seen as valid participants in a public culture of sex. Adult sexual concepts are seeping into girl world, co-opting them into this triple X world well before they understand what is happening, well before they're cognitively and developmentally equipped to even process the information. It is an imposition on their childhoods to have to try to understand and comprehend the sexual imagery, the sexual messaging that they're being bombarded with all the time. Girls are pressured to adopt qualified roles and behaviours just last week, a school counsellor told me that the latest trend at his school is for uh, little boys to say to little girls, uh, if you give me oral sex, I'll give you a kiss. Well, since when did pornography come out behind the counter to be plastered all over the public spaces that we all have to inhabit? Who said this was okay? And I think if we don't speak out, if we don't challenge it, we're actually complicit in allowing that to remain. Elizabeth Merriman, writing in The Australian, has said, in a culture that dresses little girls as sexy little women, Pedophiles may feel that their view of children as sexual objects has been vindicated by society. At every level of society, we are vindicating the view that children are sexually interesting, that little girls especially are sexually interesting and possibly even sexually available. I just want to say a little note of caution. Some of this material is confronting, but I need to convey to you that all of the material I'm going to show you is mainstream. It's all mainstream. It's what our kids see all the time. Try jingling these and unwrap me on children's underwear. Why isn't this illegal? I ask you, who said this was okay? Who's even thinking these things up? That's, that's what I always think about. People, they sit around a board table and think, you know, what's some new creative designs for babies' t-shirts? Oh, I know. Uh, if the milk, where's the whiskey tits? Another t-shirt I came across the other day for tweens, for tweens, showed uh, an image of a fire hydrant with the words, I put out. I put out for tween girls in a family department store. I put out, putting girls in danger, suggesting that girls think, as I said before, are just there as service stations for boys. A girlfriend has a self-respect policy. They want girls to respect their bodies, to love themselves, all of that good stuff. At the same time admitting that they airbrush and photoshop the images of every woman in their magazine, including their own staff. So how do you say to girls on the one hand, we want you to love and respect yourself, oh by the way, we actually airbrush images of women in our magazine because we maybe don't really think that real women should be on the pages of our magazine. Total hypocrisy. Girls are more vulnerable to sexual assault when they are drunk, when they've had their drinks spiked, etc. This is a massive problem. It's not good just to be sitting in a gun and throwing up and then be sexually assaulted and wake up and not know where you are. The sexual assault counsellors I talk to tell me that this is what they see all the time. And yet Dolly and girlfriend think it's okay to put mobile phone wallpaper that says DNG drunk and gorgeous. You know, this is not okay. This is really dangerous, socially irresponsible. Behavior. The manufacturers of Brad's dolls say girls don't theorize, accessorize. Don't theorize, don't think, don't use your brain, just collect accessories. Did you know that was a slogan for Brad's? Don't theorize, accessorize? I mean, is it any wonder that I, I feel we've gone backwards as a, as a women's movement that a slogan like that can even be acceptable in this day and age? It just staggers me. What else they say, the manufacturers say, is that, quote, all nine baby brats know how to flaunt it and they're keeping it real in the crib. What other baby brats flaunting, I ask you? Now, some of these magazines have things like cute crush issues. What to do when you have a crush on an older boy or an older man? Cute crush issues for seven, eight, nine, ten year olds? Who said that was okay? Where is the social responsibility for these magazines that so many little girls are reading to learn about how to do life? Dr. Lauren Rosewarn says, why is it that if a man puts up a pin-up image in the workplace, that is considered sexual harassment, but advertisers and marketers are able to put up giant billboards, giant pin-ups all over the public space in which we have to live, and that's okay. We're not meant to complain about that. Lauren Rosewarn says, such advertisements are helping normalise pornographic images by displaying them in places where they are unavoidable and thus encouraging the acceptance of them. This process is known as mainstreaming explicit sexual expression has become naturalised. This is just a classic Scooby-Doo in with the sex magazines at child's eye level in the milk bar. Scooby-Doo. I mean, what an illustration. A Channel 4 documentary called The Sex Education Show vs. Pornography screened in the UK in March 2009 showed a group of boys from a high school in Norfolk photographs of 10 pairs of breasts. The boys were all shocked by the natural breasts. 
because they're going to be at porn, they're not seeing natural breasts. And alarmingly, their female classmates in this documentary are also shocked. And uh, they're unimpressed, they don't like natural women's breasts. And uh, the girls in this school were all unhappy with their own breasts, are we surprised? Teenage girls are also undergoing Brazilian waxing and describing feeling ashamed if they haven't had this done to them. I know 13-year-old girls getting messages on their mobile phones, getting sent pictures of shaved genitals and asked, when are you going to get yours done? by the boys in their schools. My Beautiful Mummy is a book written for children to understand why mummies had a breast enhancement, a tummy tuck and a nose job. Grooming little girls for cosmetic surgery. I want to say a bit about the way that uh, these sexualised messages are impacting sexual behaviours and relationships. Many girls describe meaningless sexual hookups. They describe feeling like crash test dummies uh, by the boys in their lives. Uh, it's all about the, the effing, the sex, the physical act. There's no, there's little intimacy, little real love and connection. Volley magazine had a feature containing a section entitled, Oh My God, My Boyfriend Wants Me To, followed by three particular sexual acts. Dolly gave a clinical description of each act. How to do it, girls. Here's how you do it. What about saying, if you're 11, you're 12, you're 13, hello, call the police. Uh, hello, tell your parents. Get the guy arrested. Uh, find another boy to hang out with. None of that. Here's how you do it, girls. Oral anal hand jobs. The site says, we feature thousands of the most extreme teen porn movies ever taped. Our specialty is young girls drunk or drugged before they are brutally abused. Some guys help a girl home when she has had too much to drink. We say, call your friends, bring out the camera, and then take turns too, etc. Make sure you feel every minute of your humiliation. Why is that okay? Why do the people that oppose Stephen Conroy's very good proposition, which is only a trial, they're opposing the trials, we haven't got legislation yet, uh, I want them to tell me why that's okay. Because see, what we haven't done is we haven't made them tell us why it's okay. They call us prudes and wowsers and moralizers. Uh, this is inciting crimes of violence against girls and women. And you don't have to be a prude or a moralizer to be concerned about that. You know, when you view these sites as I have, you are actually viewing crime scenes evidence. It's not rape, it's a surprise sex t shirt designed and made in Australia. It's not rape, it's a surprise sex. Who says this is okay? Why is that legal, friends? Why is that legal? Why is that okay? It's putting my children and your children in danger. Rape is not surprise sex, it's rape. We have had changes made, we've had campaigns stopped, advertising campaigns stopped uh, as a result sometimes of one complaint. I got a game called Rape Play, it's a game that was the play to rape a mother and her two children banned in this country. One complaint, so sometimes just one complaint will do it. We do hear from parents. A lot of the things we hear is, Mother's saying things like, oh, I thought it was just me. I thought there was something wrong with me for having an issue with when I go into Target and I see sexual slogans on, uh, you know, the backsides of the underwear uh, for girls. And what they've realised, and this is one of the encouraging things, and God knows you probably need to hear something encouraging at this point, is that they've realised, oh, actually, no, I'm connected to thousands of other women that hate this stuff as well. They hate going into the corner store and seeing the porn. They hate the billboards. They hate going into their video store and seeing the R-rated stuff beside the kids' section. You know, again, who said that's okay? We have to live in this space, and why should we have to put up with it? I'm actually seeing this phenomenon of girls coming up to me at youth camps, retreats, schools, saying, can you help me to help my mother? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my mother hates herself. My mother weighs herself 100 times a day. My mother won't let me eat dessert. My mother won't make me work out at the gym. My mother, this is one example I was given two weeks ago, my mother bought me a size 10 um, ball dress for my end of year prom, and I'm a size 14, and she said, you better get into that. Uh, so we've got a problem with the mothers, and girls are taking their cues from the mothers. This issue actually does resonate with people in the media, because a lot of them have got kids, and a lot of them recognise that perhaps they might have been a bit complicit before they had kids. I'm also starting a new campaign, or crossed off, cross them off your Christmas list. I hope to have a website up about that soon. Crossing off corporations, organisations, services which sexualise girls and objectify women in their advertising. <coughs> Don't support them, cross them off your Christmas list.